Hello everybody, and welcome back again to the Reggae Appreciation Society. If we were asked to do a roll call of living legend in reggae music, Don Carlos would undoubtedly be in the top 5 of everyone's list. For more than 4 decades, he's blessed our eardrums with hundreds of classic anthems powered by his signature sweet voice which teams and rides even the hardest reggae instrumentals. Not to mention his unique and unmistakable singing style that has influenced many great vocalists like Michael Rose and Junior Reed. Described by everyone from the high and mighty to the average Joe as a truly humble and easygoing soul, he's among the most likable characters in modern music. He's enjoyed an extremely successful and consistent career since he made his debut with his first solo album in 1981 and is today one of the most in-demand and busiest reggae artists in the world, playing scores of concerts in packed stadiums, halls and event centers from Africa, Europe, the Americas and all the way to Asia, a schedule that will wear out artists even half his age. But there seems to be no stopping the dawn. It's not known to everyone, but Don Carlos' juggernaut of a career was inspired and motivated by the painful disappointment he experienced at the breakup of the original lineup of Black Uhuru, which he co-founded with Garth Dennis and Ducky Simpson in 1973 in the Waterhouse district of Kingston, Jamaica. He went from being underestimated and left behind with low chances of being a success to becoming a textbook example of the saying that what doesn't kill you only makes you stronger. Don Carlos was born Yuvin Carlos Spencer on the 29th of June 1952 on Bread Lane in West Kingston. When he was a child, his family moved to the Waterhouse District, a tough part of the city which like another rugged area called Trenchtown had produced some of reggae's most iconic figures like King Toby, Black Uhuru, The Jays, King Jammy and Junior Reed to name but a few. He developed a special love for singing at a very young age as his father was a tailor who made clothes at night and would always sing while working. Young Yuvin would always wake up and sing along. This singing habit persisted even in daytime and developed his voice gradually and by the time he was 13, he decided that he would become a singer and began to hang around recording studios looking for a way to showcase his talents. In the course of his hustling, he ran into Gregory Isaacs who also lived in the Waterhouse area and was by then a fast rising singer who knew all the big names. Gregory Isaacs became his mentor and teacher, not only giving him singing tips but guided him on his path in the industry. And if you listen closely, you will see that Don Carlos' style is patterned after Gregory Isaacs. Don Carlos got his first opportunity at the age of 14, when popular singer Errol Dunkley chose him to become a backup singer for a song he was recording at Joe Gibbs studio. He gave a good account of himself, with his humility and talent, and Dunkley kept working with him, and this allowed him to work his way into the record business. He began to record his own music and was working on a solo career when in 1972 he was approached by two guys who also were from the Waterhouse area. These guys were trying to put a group together and needed one more singer to complete the trio. They were Garth Dennis and his friend Ducky Simpson. Young Yuvin jumped at the opportunity and the trio became known as Black Uhuru. It was as a member of this group that he began to study Rastafarianism and acquired the nickname Don which was given to him by Ducky Simpson who was a big fan of Mafia novels. The trio began to perform in local shows around Waterhouse and other parts of Kingston and recorded their first songs at Randy Studios, which later became known as VP Records. The trio wasn't finding it easy coming up but were slowly trying to find their feet. Black Uhuru was then set up with Garth Dennis as lead singer with Ducky Simpson and Don Carlos as backup vocalists. Carlos was passionate and committed to the group but unknown to him, his bandmates were not as committed as he was to the project. There was a huge structural flaw in the makeup of Black Uhuru. Garth Dennis lived in the Waterhouse area but had grown up in Trenchtown and was a close childhood friend of the Whalers. And at the time, Trenchtown was a more vibrant area to be as regards the music scene. And Garth Dennis began to spend less time around Waterhouse and the group and was always in Trenchtown hanging out with Bob, Bonnie and Peter. And after a while, he began to record in Trenchtown as a member of a group called the Wailing Souls. Ducky also began to gravitate towards Trenchtown and had also checked out of the trio's project, taking up a job in a dry goods store but hooking up with Dennis at Trenchtown in the evenings after work. Don Carlos was basically left alone, the last man in a trio that he was recruited into by the two guys. Don Carlos stayed back in Waterhouse, disappointed and very likely embarrassed at being ditched so unceremoniously. To make matters worse, Ducky Simpson now revived Black Uhuru and recruited a young fiery singer called Michael Rose along with a singer called Errol Wilson to record the first Black Uhuru album titled Love Crisis in 1977. 
It was never explicitly stated why Carlos was not carried along, but in a recent interview, Ducky Simpson made remarks about him being a very quiet and laid-back youth. Since most performers are thought of as extroverted, outspoken and with strong personalities, maybe they felt he didn't have what it took to become a star and thought that he might have slowed them down. But there's a saying that still waters run deep. Now forced to go back to his initial plan on being a solo artist, he worked hard and quietly for three years in the shadows, developing his songwriting ability and grooming his distinctive and unique vocal style. And in 1980, he released his brilliant first single, Late Night Blues, under the name Don McCarlos. The next year, he released his debut album, Suffering, which received a lot of critical acclaim and was a fair commercial success. He was now coming into his own as a solo artist and very likely would have been content being on his own after his experiences with Black Uhuru, when Ja made good the singing that no man is an island. While doing his thing, he began to run into an old face from Waterhouse and they began to hang out a lot together. This friend of his was named Alric Malcolm but was known in the streets as Goldie. Goldie was from Trelawney outside Kingston but used to spend his holidays with his elder sister who lived in Waterhouse. Goldie was crazy about music and used to follow Don Carlos around. Anywhere Carlos went, Goldie would be there, from the studios, nightclubs, parties, shows, wherever. He would show up to lend support and eventually the pair linked up. Goldie became a sidekick, co-writer, backup singer, confidant and loyal friend. If the 70s had been the learning curve for Don Carlos, the 80s would turn out to be a time to reap the rewards after more than 15 years of grinding. It turned out to be an unbelievably productive decade. The duo of Don Carlos and Gold released their first album titled Them Never Know Natty Dread Have Him Credential, a well-received album that was followed up by the phenomenal and ultra-successful classic Harvest Time, which was loaded with unforgettable anthems. Also in the same year, he released a joint album with legendary Roots band Culture titled Roots and Culture and ended 1982 on a high with the album called Day to Day Living. As the 80s unfolded, the duo of Don Carlos and Gold released classic after classic album from the likes of 1983's Spread Out and Pure Gold down to 1984's Never Run Away and the masterpiece called Passing Glance. All hugely successful all over the globe, especially in Africa where he had an almost religious following by tens of millions of fans since the release of his debut album in 1981. The decade ended on a high when in 1989, Ducky Simpson, who had lost and changed members of Black Uhuru over the years, requested for Don Carlos to come back to Black Uhuru to be the lead vocalist in the original lineup of Dennis, Simpson and Carlos. This reunion lasted for five years and spawned four classic albums which were all nominated for Grammy Awards. In 1994, Don Carlos went back to his beloved partnership with Gold and they released their album Ease Up in the same year. The pair went on a series of sold out tours and concerts to legions of fans around the world who were excited to have the duo back on the road again. They were back to winning ways and traveled to Washington DC in 1998 to start recording their next album seven days a week when tragedy struck. Goldie was shot during a rugby attempt and was left partially disabled. He soon after suffered a stroke and was unable to continue working as a recording artist. This ended the duo of Don Carlos and Gold and this terribly affected Don. You see, his collaboration with Gold marked his comeback after the setback of the initial dissolution of Black Uhuru and represented the most memorable time in his career. He and his wingman did huge things together from the 1980s into the 90s for 18 straight years. After a while, Don managed to get himself together and kept working, releasing albums and touring to packed stadiums and halls around the world. He moved to California in 1999 and joined forces with a band called Reggae Angels. That band evolved into his current band, Dub Vision. Today, Don Carlos and Dub Vision is one of the most in-demand musical acts on the planet, playing hundreds of venues every year to ecstatic audiences that can't get enough of the great Don Carlos. His 2022 calendar was ridiculous and there seems to be no stopping the Don Carlos train. He's remained the same humble, calm and approachable guy he was while a struggling teenager in Waterhouse and remains as driven and as motivated as he ever was. His initial disappointment pushed him into the mega star and legend that he became over the years and he's living proof of the saying that what doesn't kill you only makes you stronger and better. So there you have it. Thank you for watching the video today. Please leave a like, subscribe and until next time, Jabless.